Okay, guys, all right. So let's talk about the 2009 Mac Pro that I have still under my desk there. So I'm not quite sure why and how I ended up on some video of a guy showing how you could install macOS, Big Show, and all the newer versions of macOS on older Macs that are not really support them anymore. Um, and so I thought, well, I have a 2009 Mac Pro still under my desk. I got this machine around May 2012. This is a used 2009 machine and it replaced a 2006 Mac Pro I had back then. And I mainly used it for Final Cut 7 and then switched to Premiere with all that uh, first days of Final Cut 10 issue there. Anyways, long story short, I had this machine sitting here. I used it with Windows for gaming for a bit, but it never really got used uh, in the current days of Final Cut 10, so to speak. So I tested it out. I actually put in my backup drive from my Mac Mini, my 2018 Mac Mini. I sold already, so it's gone. I used this with the eGPU and the RX 5500 8GB is still here. Nobody wants to buy it. It seems I have it on eBay since I got my new MacBook Pro and it, yeah, nobody wants to buy it. Not quite sure. Anyways, I put in the SSD, the backup SSD from my Mac Mini that had Big Show on it and I updated it, so to speak, with this tool. And so, yeah, I put it in, hit the power button and it booted up. No issues there. Bluetooth works, Wi-Fi works, everything works. It's interesting. It's a backup system from a 2018 Mac Mini and I didn't do anything to it. No special drivers or something going on. I just used this tool and everything works just fine. So yeah, I opened up a few projects, a few test projects uh, that I used for my eGPU benchmarking and stuff like that to see how it performs. There was also a red project. All right, so this is the 8K, 6K DJI Ronin 40 test footage edit thingy. And yeah, the uh, Mac Pro with the RX 5500 uh, yeah, took 8 minutes, 18 seconds, so not too good. But then again, the Mac Mini also took 6 minutes. And of course, the MacBook Pro, the new one with the M1 Max, is quite fast. So then I have this A7S test project or edit, whatever, and I exported it to a 4K ProRes. It's only a 1 minute 28 second project, but yeah, the Mac Pro did quite well here. 2 minutes and 32 seconds, but it's nothing fancy, not much going on. Just a simple color create, simple edit, um, yeah, 4K to 4K. I think, yeah, as you can see, it's not too slow compared to the other Intel machines. I think the CPU doesn't have to do much here, so yeah. A different kind of thing is when you look at mixed media, uh, 4K, 1080p and stuff like that, and work in a 1080 project and export a 1080p file, yeah, the Mac Pro is kind of slow. It's a more complex edit, uh, more stuff going on, quick edits, lots of color grading, noise reduction as well. Uh, not neat video, it's the final cut noise reduction, so there you go. But then again, eight minutes in terms of export times. Uh, the other machines took about four minutes or three to four minutes. And of course, M1 Max with not even two minutes. And just for kicks, uh, I had this on the hard drive. I connected to the Mac Pro and I exported this quick one minute edit. It's not really an edit. It's just a bunch of red raw footage. And yeah, three minutes, it's all right. I mean, uh, I've seen worse. Uh, playback is uh, interestingly good though. Uh, and of course the M1 Max um, did quite well. 
And we have the Bruce X benchmark just for fun. I had to compare those numbers. I mean, yeah, it's slower. It is slower. There you go. I think a few things going on here. The CPU, two Xeon CPUs with eight cores in uh, total. Um, yeah, not too fast, but I think not up to the task anymore. The software is optimized for the newer chips and the newer operations they can do. And then there's the RAM. I mean, it is 32 gigs of RAM, but it is kind of slow. It's old. That is a bottleneck. And then there's the GPU. I mean, it is supporting metal. It's natively in the system, so to speak. But somehow it seems to be, even though it is in a 16 lane PCI slot, it is only working on eight lanes. Not quite sure what's going on. I think because it's not a native Mac GPU, the system kind of doesn't know what to do. Back in the days with the Nvidia cards and even with AMD cards and ATI cards, the Radeon cards, you could actually flash those cards and the system would use the full PCI lanes. And the last thing is hard drives and stuff like that. I have the system on an SSD inside of the Mac, but it's not the fastest. Also, I have two USB 3 cards with four ports each. Uh, drive speeds are um, yeah, not too slow, but not too fast. Usually I get like 400, 500 megabytes a second with those SSDs I use. With the Mac Pro, I get like 300, 350 megabytes per second. So long story short for this interesting odd idea to revive my 2009 Mac Pro. So now it's my backup machine. So there you go. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any tips for me, what I should test out to improve speed, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one about Final Cut, something about Final Cut. I have a long list of Final Cut videos in the planning. Also something with lenses, lens filters, uh, a time-lapse mode for video trick, uh, something like that. I try to put out a few more videos here and there, but the wheel work is kind of picking up uh, lately. So that's also a good thing. Also, I have the small rig fluid hat here. I tried this out. Not quite sure yet if this is any good or if I keep it. I will put a video about that out as well at some point. Anyways, that's it. See you in the next one at some point and of course uh, back to work.